Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. I'm going to put some cork on some saxophone keys today. And the cork you want to use for instruments is a very high quality cork. Uh, you can see there, there aren't a lot of holes in it and uh, the stuff is fairly expensive so you want to be careful with how much you use and you don't want to waste any. Cork comes in several different thicknesses but for saxophones basically you're just going to need three different thicknesses. This is the thin stuff, uh, 1 64th inch or 0.4 millimeters. Then this is 1 16th or 1.6 millimeters, and this is the one that you're going to use the most of, the 16th or 1.6 millimeters. And then there's some that's a little bit thicker that you use on a couple of the keys, uh, 3 seconds inch or 2.4 millimeters. It can be a little bit intimidating when you look at a big pile of approximately 30 keys and levers on saxophones and you don't know which thickness goes on there. Don't worry about it, it's not that hard. A lot of it's common sense and just remember that the most common one you use is the 16th inch. If you put that on most of the keys, you're doing well. I'm going to be working on a saxophone made by Bundy. Different saxophones have a little bit different key styles and uh, sometimes they get different thicknesses of cork. Uh, but don't worry about that. Uh, they are pretty much the same and with a little common sense you can figure it out. And also one of the nice things about cork is it's easy to sand down with a piece of sandpaper. And if you put a cork that's too thin, you can either glue more cork on or you can just take the old cork off and put a thicker cork on. So if you encounter a cork that's not the right thickness, it's not really that hard to deal with. I'm going to show you which keys get which thickness of cork, uh, but remember this is just a guide. Different saxophones are going to be different, and sometimes even on the same brand of saxophone, they get different thicknesses of cork if the keys are slightly bent a little differently or for whatever reason. Uh, this is a guide, so if one key doesn't work, just remember to change the thickness of cork or you can also sand it down. But this would be a guide just to help you get started. These are the keys that get no corks and you'll see two of them have felt bumpers on them, but they don't get any cork. These are the keys that get the little felt discs and there are only two of those. These are the keys with a thin 1 64th or 0.4 millimeter cork. You see that this one has two corks, this one has two, and this one has three thin corks and a different one. And some of these have more than one cork. This one, this one, and this one. And then this one has multiple thicknesses of cork. The thin cork basically goes between two keys and it doesn't touch the body of the instrument. These are the keys that get the 16th inch or 1.6 millimeter cork. And some keys have more than one thickness, like this one here. You put the uh, 16th inch on right there on the tab. And this one, the 16th inch cork goes on the rocker. Uh, the other part gets a thicker cork. Then the G-sharp key gets 16th inch here and here. And the thinner cork on the tab. All of the palm keys and all of the keys with pearl get 16th inch cork also. And two keys get the 332nd or 2.4 millimeter cork. I hope this video has been helpful, and I have other videos for adjusting, sanding, and the names of keys, and the links are in the description below for those videos. Cork comes from the bark of cork oak trees, which are grown mostly in Portugal and a little bit in Spain. Every 10 years they get a, a thick layer of bark on the cork oak trees and they have to harvest it off of it. And actually if they don't harvest it, the tree will die. So uh, they're actually helping the trees by uh, harvesting the cork off of the tree.